Daniel Crosslink, welcome back to yet another video. Today I'm unboxing and having a first look at the Ender 3 V2 and we're starting right now. Today you're gonna see the unboxing process, how easy the setup is, how easy we can get the first test print. And after we've done the first successful test print, I will put this printer in my time-lapse setup as with all of the printers. This time I'm aiming for about 100 hours of test printing before I will do my final review. So as usual for Creality, the packaging was excellent. Everything was there, no parts were missing. Things are stored in two levels. The upper one contains the base frame and extrusions and in the lower part of the packaging there is all the tools and screws as well as some test filament, which I honestly never use. I recommend to unwrap and sort everything first on a large table, this will make the build process much easier. Also, I would read the manual front to back first to get an idea what's going to happen in which order. The first thing to do is to mount the vertical frame parts, this is the most crucial part to get right. These extrusions need to be straight and tight, but don't overdo the tightening, because this can destroy the threads. Next is to attach the Z end stop switch and connect the right cable to it. The Z-axis motor gets mounted to the frame and then the threaded rod for the Z-axis is connected to the coupling of the motor. A little more complicated but still easy enough is the assembly of the X-carriage, which allows the hot end to slide along the X-axis using belt driven from the side. Up until here the assembly is still identical to the Ender 3 version 1 and Ender 3 Pro. While the hot end with the cooling fans look a little bit different from the outside, it's still the same under the hood as the Ender 3 version 1 and the Pro version. The first actual difference here is the new belt tensioner, which is a welcome change and improvement to the X-Belt system. It's easy to mount and easy to tension the belt with. After checking that the carriage moves smoothly, it's now time to slide the carriage over the vertical frame extrusions. The PTFE tube gets connected to the extruder and the cables are fixed to it as well so they don't get in the way. The last thing to do with the frame is to close the upper part with the last horizontal extrusion using four screws and again those should be tight but be careful also not to overdo it. Then we connect the remaining cables to all the motors and end stop switches. Everything is labeled nicely so there should not be any confusion. The X end stop switch connector is a little bit hidden under the motor cover but here you can see how it's done. The Z-axis motor cable looked a little bit short to root it around the outside of the vertical extrusion, but I managed to pull it a bit more out of the case and run it on the inside and I double checked that it's not blocking the Y-axis. Next thing to do is to connect the display cable to the connector on the back of the display and then mount the display holder to the side of the frame. The display is obviously very different from the previous printer versions. On the top of the frame I finally fixed the spool holder. And this is the new extruder motor hand knob, which is just sitting on the motor axis. Now we should be done with the assembly, final check of the motor movements and we're ready to start printing. So you should have seen that the assembly of the Ender 3 version 2 isn't that different from the previous models. If you've never assembled one of these printers, it took me about 30 to 40 minutes to assemble this printer, very comparable to the previous versions. So what I want to tell you now is the differences between all these three different printers. The version 2, the Pro and the V1. And one question from the community was also, is it worth upgrading from the V1 to the V2? So I think we're going to discover this now. So let's start from the frame perspective. The frames for all of these three printers are identical, I would say. There's no visible difference just in the metal frame and how it's made. Actually, the V2 frame has still two holes here on the side that were actually supposed to be for the power supply on the Pro. So I guess it's actually the same frame. Talking about the power supply, the V1 power supply is still mounted here on the side. It's a quite large power supply. It's really loud and I still think it's good enough for this printer. I modified it so it has a more silent fan. On the Ender 3 Pro, 
there is already a mean well power supply so it has a better quality still not really silent but it's also still mounted here on the side of the frame on the v2 the power supply has moved to the bottom of the frame which is a nice design change functionality wise it's not different and it's also the same power supply so it's a well appreciated change i think it's just making the printer look a little bit more sleek and clean Next, let's talk about the hot end setup. So on the V1, of course, I've modified that complete hot end setup with the cooling system heavily, but originally it looks exactly as in the Pro. So they are absolutely identical. Now the V2 looks different, but it's actually technically it's the same thing. It just has a different cover. It's not metal anymore. It's plastic now, but under the hood, it's absolutely the same. Then the extruders here on the V1, you couldn't adjust the tension of the extruder on the Pro and on the V2 you have a little screw here where you can adjust the tension so basically the pressure of the gears against the filament can be adjusted here on both versions. On the V2 now you have this little adjustment knob that is a nice add-on but you can easily add this as a printed part to the older versions as well. Now in general the extruders are still looking very similar. They are still made from plastic so there's no metal version here on the V2. It's still the same plastic extruder setup. Then the major difference of course on the X carriage system here. Um, these are identical. They have no belt tensioner. The V2 has a belt tensioner on the X axis and it also has a belt tensioner on the Y axis. This is new and this is also an appreciated add-on. Of course you can modify your original version 1 and the Pro to have a belt tensioner system. Now let's talk about the build plate. On the version 1 there was originally just a plastic plate that was sitting on top of the heat bed. It was fixed with clamps, uh, very similar actually to the clamping system here for the glass plate on the V2. I changed it to a removable spring steel bed surface, which I really like the most. I have it on almost every printer. The Pro version has already a removable sheet. It's not a spring steel, but it's removable. So this is already an upgrade that I like. On the V2, we have the glass plate. Now you can be a fan or not of glass plates. I would have appreciated the most if they had added a spring steel surface but the glass plate is also nice to have. Then in general, if you look at the cable management of these three printers, the version one and the version two are still quite messy in terms of how much of the cables you can first see and how the routing of the cable works. So you have to fix this on both older printer models. The version two is much better. There's less cables dangling around, especially here in the back. It's better that the cables come out to the back of the printer and not to the side. So they don't get in the way of the y-axis. A lot of the parts here, for example, the belt system here on the y-axis, it's a little bit enclosed here. And um, this is true for other parts of this system as well on the V2. Now let's talk about the display. The display here on the version one is a monochrome display. Same here on the pro version, it's also monochrome. Now here it's different, it's a color display, but it's still not a touch screen. You will see this in the test, but it's uh, also turned now vertical and seems to be just a little bit larger but not that much. Then let's have a look at the bottom especially here on the V2 we have this little nice toolbox compartment here which is an add-on that you can also print of course for the older versions. The electronics case isn't that much different on the V2 very similar to the Pro version and on the V1 on the original V1 the fan for the electronics case was on the top and you always had some issues if things were falling into that fan. They changed it in the upgraded version one. So the fan is also on the bottom of the printer. This is also true for the Pro and the V2. Now let's talk about the main boards on these printer models. So the original printers, they have 8-bit main boards which work fine, but you're getting into troubles if you want to have a lot of features now with Marlin 2.0. It's getting more and more difficult to pack all those features into the limited memory of the 8-bit boards. Now on the V2, we have the new 32-bit main board, so you can pack all the features you want into that memory and it's also a faster processor. Now, as I told you already, Creality has announced that they will change the main boards on all printer models on all Ender versions. Also the version one and the Pro, they will get a 32-bit main board. So if you buy a new version one or a Pro today, 
it might have already a 32-bit mainboard, but you cannot tell unless you look inside of the box or the seller tells you what you will get. And still, the 32-bit mainboards for the V1, the Pro and the V2, they have different stepper drivers. So the V1 doesn't have a silent driver on the mainboard and the Pro is supposed to have silent drivers and the V2 is also having silent drivers. And the fact that these mainboards are going to be different is also causing issues when you want to flash firmware because if you want to build your own firmware you need to know what stepper drivers are on the mainboard to select the correct drivers. So coming to the question is it worth upgrading from the V1 to a V2 if you have the V1? For me the question is quite clear. I have modified this printer so heavily that it's actually more capable, it has real touch, it has a more powerful cooling system. I did all kinds of upgrades, filament sensor, firmware, probably going to change the mainboard and the display now. But if you're still on the original, original version, probably still unmodified and it's still working fine, you have the choice of putting a lot of money into upgrades or maybe selling that printer to a friend or someone on eBay and then getting the version to, to get you in a better position. I guess if you sum up all the upgrades that I've did to this printer, they are pretty expensive and then I was probably today better off to get the V2. Now I'd like to show you how I did the first test print. I heated up the hot end and bed surface with the preheat PLA menu option. Here you see, the screen is not a touch screen unfortunately, although you might think it is. The menu options are still selected with the turning knob as in the previous versions. After the heat up I did an auto home and I hoped that Creality would have included the corner leveling menu into the firmware, but it is missing so I first had to disable stepper motors so I could push around the axis as I need for this process. Doing the corner leveling was easy. It just took me 5 minutes to adjust all 4 bed leveling screws to the right tension so the paper is just being grabbed by the nozzle and I could feel some resistance. Still, you should be able to push the paper in between nozzle and glass plate without being blocked. Then I inserted the filament into the Bowden system. I copied a Banshee model that I sliced with Cura to the SD card. The SD card is inserted upside down into the slot. After inserting the SD card, the firmware detects the change and I started to print from the print menu. The first test print started quite nicely without any issues, but after half of the print time I ran into the problem that the grub screws that were holding the extruder gear in place weren't tightened enough from factory and so the gear slowly moved up on the motor shaft until it didn't push the filament anymore through the tube. So I had to redo the print after fixing that. That second try turned out to be really good. Look at the details, there is no issues visible on this Benchy. No ringing, almost zero stringing and no blobs. It just looks really perfect to me. Now this printer goes into my time lapse setup for the next 100 hours and I will update you on the progress in the next weeks until I do my final review. If you like this video, please give it a good old thumbs up. You probably will also find these two other videos here helpful that I've linked up here for you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.